It was a sweltering August afternoon, the kind where the air feels thick and heavy, almost too much to breathe in. I was driving home from a particularly grueling day at the office, mind wandering to the comfort of my air-conditioned living room and the cold beer waiting in my fridge. That's when I felt it, the slight pull of my car to the left, a subtle but unmistakable sign that something was amiss. At the next red light, the guy in the truck beside me honked and gestured towards my car. Rolling down the window, I was met with, Hey buddy, looks like you've got a flat tire there. Thanks for the heads up, I called back, my heart sinking a bit. Pulling into the nearest parking lot, I confirmed my suspicion, a flat tire, with a defiant screw lodged right in the middle of it. Great, just what I needed. I decided to tackle the situation head-on, retrieving the spare tire and tools from my trunk. The heat was relentless, sweat beating on my forehead as I struggled with the stubborn lug nuts. Just as I was about to get the spare on, a voice interrupted my focus. Need a hand with that? I looked up to see a woman standing there, her expression a mix of concern and amusement. She was casually dressed, the kind of effortlessly chic that you see in magazine spreads, with a loose-fitting sundress and sunglasses perched atop her head. I've got it, but thanks, I replied, trying to mask my irritation with the situation. I insist, she said, stepping closer. I'm Kara. I hesitated for a moment but then relented, stepping aside to let her help. Together, we managed to get the spare tire on in no time. Thanks, Kara. I'm Jake, I said, offering her a smile. I owe you one. Consider it my good deed for the day, she said with a wink. Just pay it forward. As she walked away, I couldn't help but feel that there was something intriguing about her, a story behind those eyes that had seen more than they let on. Little did I know, this chance encounter would be the start of a whirlwind adventure, one filled with twists, turns, and revelations that would challenge everything I thought I knew about love, loyalty, and the pursuit of happiness. After the encounter with Kara, my drive home was filled with an odd sense of anticipation. It wasn't just the relief of having avoided a long ordeal with the tire, it was her. Something about Kara lingered in my mind, a puzzle begging to be solved but that puzzle would have to wait. Arriving home, I was greeted by the silence of an empty house. My wife, Melissa, should have been home by now. A flicker of annoyance crossed my mind, quickly overshadowed by a creeping worry. It wasn't like her to be late without a call or text. I tried calling her phone, only to be met with her voicemail. Unease settled in my stomach as I paced the living room, my gaze catching the photo of us on the mantel. Smiling faces from our last vacation stared back, a stark contrast to the growing tension in the air. That's when I heard it, the faint sound of her car pulling into the driveway. Relief washed over me, quickly replaced by a need for answers. As the front door opened, I braced myself for an explanation, but nothing could have prepared me for what came next. Melissa walked in, her face pale, eyes red-rimmed from crying. My heart sank at the sight the questions dying on my lips. Jake, we need to talk, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I nodded, leading her to the sofa, where we sat in silence for a moment that stretched into eternity. Then, with a shaky breath, Melissa began to unravel a tale that would turn my world upside down. She confessed to an affair, a mistake she said, born out of loneliness and a sense of disconnection between us. Her words felt like punches to the gut, each revelation more painful than the last. The trust and love that I thought were the foundation of our marriage crumbled beneath the weight of her betrayal. I'm so sorry, Jake. I never meant for any of this to happen, she pleaded, tears streaming down her face. Anger, hurt, and disbelief warred within me. Part of me wanted to rage, to scream at her for the betrayal. But another part, a part one didn't recognize, urged me to listen, to try and understand the why behind her actions. The conversation stretched on, a tangled mess of apologies, explanations, and raw emotions. By the end, exhaustion had taken hold, leaving us both drained and uncertain of what the future held. As I lay in bed that night, staring at the ceiling, I realized that confronting the truth was only the beginning. The real challenge lay in what came next, 
navigating the aftermath of betrayal and deciding whether the love we once shared was enough to rebuild from the ashes. The morning light crept through the curtains, casting a warm glow over the room. It was a stark contrast to the cold dread that had settled in my heart. Today wasn't just any other day, it was the day I had to face my daughter, Sophie, with the truth about her mother and me. Sophie was the light of my life, a beacon of joy in the darkest of times. At just eight years old, she had a spirit that was infectious, a curiosity about the world that was insatiable. How was I to tell her that the world she knew, the family she loved, was on the brink of falling apart? Breakfast was a silent affair. Melissa had already left, claiming an early meeting, but the tension in her departure spoke volumes. Sophie chattered away about her upcoming school project on marine life, oblivious to the storm brewing around her. I listened, nodding and smiling, all the while wondering how to broach the subject weighing heavily on my mind. Daddy, are you okay? You seem sad, Sophie's voice cut through my reverie, her innocent eyes searching mine for answers. I sighed, setting my fork down. Sof, there's something I need to talk to you about. It's about mommy and me. Her brow furrowed, a small frown forming on her lips. Is this about why mommy was crying last night? The question took me aback. Had she heard us? How much did she understand? I had hoped to shield her from this, at least for a little while longer. Yes, honey, it is, I admitted, choosing my words carefully. Sometimes, grown-ups have disagreements, and they need to work through them. Mommy and I are having a bit of a tough time right now, but we both love you very much. Sophie's frown deepened, a look of concern etching her features. Are you and mommy going to stop being married? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The directness of her question caught me off guard. Children have a way of cutting through the complexities of adult problems with their straightforwardness. We're trying to figure things out, sophomore. No matter what happens, we're always going to be a family, okay? You're the most important thing to us. Sophie nodded, though I could see the uncertainty in her eyes. She reached out, wrapping her small hands around mine. I love you, Daddy. I don't want things to change. Her words were a bomb to my aching heart, yet they also served as a painful reminder of the daunting task ahead. How was I to navigate this tumultuous time without causing her more pain? How could Melissa and I come to a resolution that would preserve the semblance of normalcy for our daughter? The day passed in a blur, my mind preoccupied with the conversation from the morning. I knew that this was just the beginning of a long, difficult journey. As a father, my priority was to protect and provide for Sophie, to ensure her happiness and well-being amidst the upheaval. But as I tucked her into bed that night, her small frame curled up under the covers, a sense of resolve settled over me. No matter what the future held, I would do everything in my power to ensure that Sophie felt loved and secure. She was my North Star, guiding me through the storm, and I was determined to weather it for her sake. The days that followed were a blur of emotions and tough decisions. Melissa and I treaded carefully around each other, the air thick with unspoken words and lingering hurt. But life had to go on, especially for Sophie's sake. We kept up appearances, maintaining a semblance of normalcy for our daughter, even as our world crumbled behind closed doors. It was a Tuesday evening when the fallout really hit. I was in the kitchen, half-heartedly assembling a sandwich for dinner, when Melissa walked in. The look on her face told me everything I needed to know before she even spoke. Jake, we need to talk about what's next, she said, her voice steady but her eyes betraying a hint of fear. I nodded bracing myself for the conversation I knew was coming but had secretly hoped to avoid. We sat at the dining table, the same table where we'd shared countless family meals, laughter, and stories. Now, it was just a battleground for our final stand. I think it's clear that we can't go on like this, Melissa began, her fingers nervously tracing the grain of the wood. I've been thinking a lot about what's best for Sophie, and for us. The mention of Sophie's name was a jolt to my heart. This wasn't just about us anymore, it was about our little girl and the life she would have after the dust settled. I agree, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. So, what are you suggesting? Melissa took a deep breath, stealing herself. 
I think. I think we should consider separation. At least for now, to give us both some space to figure things out. The word separation hung in the air between us, heavy and ominous. It was one thing to think it, to turn it over in your mind as a distant possibility. It was another to hear it spoken aloud, making it real, unavoidable. And what about Sophie? I asked, the worry for my daughter overshadowing my own feelings of hurt and betrayal. We'll co parent, of course. We both love her, and I know neither of us wants this to affect her more than it has to, Melissa said, her voice firm. The discussion that followed was practical, almost clinical, as we outlined the logistics of our separation. Who would stay in the house, how we'd split time with Sophie, the financial implications, all discussed with the detached efficiency of two business partners dissolving a venture, rather than a couple ending a marriage. By the end of the night, we had a plan in place, a temporary band-aid on a wound that ran much deeper than either of us wanted to admit. As Melissa retreated to the guest room, the finality of our conversation weighed heavily on me. I found myself wandering to Sophie's room, watching her sleep peacefully, oblivious to the storm raging around her. In that moment, I made a silent vow to shield her from as much of the fallout as possible. She was the innocent in all this, and I would do everything in my power to protect her happiness, even if it meant sacrificing my own. The days following the revelation were some of the hardest I'd ever faced. The once comforting walls of our home now felt like they echoed with the remnants of our fractured family. Work provided no refuge, with my mind constantly drifting back to Sophie and the uncertain future that lay ahead. It was during one of these aimless evenings, as I sat in the park watching the sun dip below the horizon, that I found an unexpected source of solace. The park was mostly empty, save for a few joggers and a woman sitting on a bench nearby, her attention fixed on a book in her lap. Something about her seemed familiar, and it took me a moment to place her, it was Kara, the woman who had helped me with the flat tire. She looked different in the fading light, more at ease, yet still carrying an air of the same intrigue I remembered. Mind if I join you? I asked, approaching the bench. She looked up, a flicker of recognition crossing her face before she smiled. Not at all. Tire problems again? I chuckled, taking a seat beside her. No, thankfully. Just needed some fresh air. We fell into easy conversation, the awkwardness of our first encounter melting away with each passing moment. Kara had a way of drawing me out, her questions thoughtful, her laughter genuine. It was a bomb to the loneliness and confusion that had clouded my days. As the sky darkened, Kara closed her book, her gaze meeting mine. You know, sometimes the hardest roads lead to the most beautiful destinations. Whatever you're going through, it's just a chapter, not the whole story. Her words, simple yet profound, struck a chord within me. In the midst of the storm, Kara was an unexpected anchor, her presence a reminder that even in our darkest moments, we're never truly alone. We continued to meet in the park, our conversations a blend of light-hearted banter and deeper musings on life. With each meeting, I found a sense of peace that had eluded me, a solace in the understanding and companionship Kara offered. It wasn't just the escape from my troubles that drew me to her, it was the sense of connection, of being understood without the need for pretense. In Kara, I found not only a friend but a confidant, someone who reminded me that there was still beauty to be found in the world, even when it seemed shrouded in shadows. As the weeks passed, the weight of my situation began to lift, ever so slightly. Though the path ahead remained uncertain, the time spent with Kara rekindled a spark of hope within me. It was a reminder that no matter how broken things seemed, there was always a chance for renewal, for solace in the midst of chaos. And as I looked forward to our meetings in the park, I realized that sometimes, solace comes from the most unexpected places, a gentle reminder that even in our loneliest moments, we're never truly alone. Weeks turned into months, and the sharp edges of my pain began to dull, softened by time and the unexpected friendship I found with Kara. The fallout of my marriage felt less like an anchor and more like a cumbersome weight I was slowly learning to set aside. It was in this time of transition that I found myself at a crossroads, teetering between holding on to the past and stepping into the unknown future. 
One crisp autumn evening, as Kara and I sat on our usual bench watching the leaves fall in a silent dance, she turned to me, her eyes reflecting the golden hues of the setting sun. Jake, have you ever thought about what comes next? After all the dust settles? Her question caught me off guard, a gentle probe into the recesses of my thoughts I had carefully avoided. I guess I've been too caught up in getting through each day. Why do you ask? Kara smiled, a soft, knowing curve of her lips. Because sometimes, we get so focused on surviving the storm, we forget to imagine the calm that follows. You deserve happiness, Jake, beyond just making it through. Her words lingered in the air between us, a gentle nudge towards a future I hadn't allowed myself to consider. It was in that moment, amidst the backdrop of falling leaves and fading light, that I realized I wanted to explore what that future might look like, and I wanted Kara by my side as I did. The decision to start anew wasn't made in a grand gesture or moment of epiphany. It was the culmination of quiet moments, shared laughter, and the comforting presence of someone who saw me for who I was, not just the fragments of my past. I took a deep breath, turning to face Kara fully. I think I'm ready to find out what comes next. And I. I'd like you to be a part of that journey, if you're willing. Kara's response was a smile that reached her eyes, lighting them up with a warmth that spread through me. I can't think of anything I'd want more. Our relationship evolved slowly, built on the foundation of friendship and deepened by a shared understanding of loss and the hope for renewal. With Kara, I discovered parts of myself I had forgotten, and in her laughter, I found a melody that soothed the remnants of my heartache. Sophie, too, found joy in our new beginning. Kara's presence brought a sense of normalcy and comfort that had been missing from our home. Their bond, formed over shared interests and Kara's genuine warmth, was a bomb to the wounds left by the upheaval in her young life. As the seasons changed, so did the nature of my relationship with Kara. What began as a friendship forged in the aftermath of my life's storm blossomed into a love that felt both new and familiar. It was a testament to the idea that even in the aftermath of our greatest trials, there is space for new beginnings, for love to take root in the soil of our sorrows. This chapter of my life, marked by loss and betrayal, was slowly closing, making way for a new story to unfold. A story not of despair, but of hope, not of endings, but of new beginnings. With Kara by my side, I stepped into this new chapter with a sense of purpose and the quiet hope that, together, we could build something beautiful from the remnants of our pasts. The transition from friendship to love with Kara was like the gentle shift from autumn to winter, seamless and natural. Our relationship deepened, rooted in the shared experiences and mutual respect that had formed the basis of our bond. Yet, as we moved forward together, we faced the delicate task of blending our lives, a dance of balance and compromise, especially for Sophie and me. Sophie had been my anchor through the storm, her well-being my north star. Introducing Kara into our lives in this new capacity required careful navigation, a path I tread with both excitement and trepidation. But Sophie, with her resilient spirit and open heart, embraced Kara with an affection that eased my worries. Their relationship, built on moments of laughter, shared stories, and quiet understanding, blossomed beautifully, a testament to their mutual love and respect. Kara, for her part, approached our budding family dynamic with a grace and sensitivity that only deepened my love for her. She never sought to replace or overshadow, but rather to add and enrich, her presence in our lives like a new melody harmonizing with an existing tune. Our home, once a place of solitude and reflection, slowly transformed into a haven of warmth and shared memories. Kara's love for art and music infused our space with color and life, her paintings adorning the walls her guitar often strumming gentle melodies that filled the evenings with a soothing ambience. The blending of our lives extended beyond the walls of our home, encompassing our families, friends, and daily routines. Sunday dinners became a cherished tradition, a time for our extended family to gather, share stories, and enjoy the comfort of togetherness. These gatherings, often filled with laughter and the clinking of glasses, served as a reminder of the beauty found in new beginnings in the coming together of different paths to form a new journey. Challenges arose, as they inevitably do, in the merging of habits, schedules, and past experiences. 
Yet, each obstacle served as an opportunity for growth, for conversations that deepened our understanding of one another. Kara's patience and kindness, her ability to listen and empathize, became the cornerstone of our ability to navigate these challenges with grace and love. As the seasons changed once more, marking a year since Kara had first entered our lives, I found myself reflecting on the journey we had embarked upon together. The blending of our lives had not been without its hurdles, but the love, laughter, and shared dreams that filled our days spoke of a harmony we had achieved, a symphony of hearts and lives intertwined. In this new chapter of our lives, we discovered the strength found in unity, the beauty of love's ability to heal and rebuild. Our blended family, with all its complexities and joys, stood as a testament to the resilience of the human heart, to the endless capacity for love and renewal. And as I looked towards the future, I did so with a heart full of gratitude for the journey, for the love that had guided us home. As the warmth of spring began to thaw the last remnants of winter, I found myself contemplating a future that was once unimaginable. Life with Kara and Sophie had evolved into a beautiful tapestry of shared moments, laughter, and love. The idea of marriage, a commitment I once thought I'd never consider again, now felt like the most natural progression in our journey together. Planning the proposal became a mission, a secret endeavor to craft a moment that would encapsulate the depth of my love for Kara. I wanted it to be a reflection of us, simple yet profound, intimate yet expansive in its promise. The day dawned clear and bright, the kind of spring day where the air buzzes with potential. I suggested a family picnic in the park, a nod to where Kara and I had shared many of our initial, soul-bearing conversations. Sophie was in on the plan, her excitement barely contained as she helped pack the basket, throwing in Kara's favorite treats and a bottle of champagne for good measure. The park was alive with the sights and sounds of early spring, families enjoying the sunshine, children's laughter mingling with the chirping of birds. We found our spot under the canopy of a blossoming cherry tree, its petals fluttering down like gentle reminders of life's fleeting, beautiful moments. Lunch passed in a blur, my heart racing with anticipation for the moment that lay ahead. As we settled into a comfortable silence, watching Sophie play in the distance, I knew the time had come. Kara, I began, my voice steady despite the whirlwind of emotions inside. From the moment you stepped into my life, you've brought nothing but light and warmth. You've been my friend, my confidant, and my greatest support. You and Sophie, you're my world. Kara's eyes met mine, a soft smile playing on her lips as she sensed the weight of the moment. I took a deep breath, reaching into my pocket for the small velvet box that held a promise a symbol of my love and commitment. Kara, I can't imagine my life without you in it. Will you marry me? Time seemed to stand still as I opened the box, revealing the ring, a delicate band of intertwined gold, symbolizing the blending of our lives, our hearts entwined in love and mutual respect. Tears glistened in Kara's eyes, a mirror to my own, as she whispered, Yes, Jake. Yes, a thousand times yes. Sophie's squeal of delight broke the spell, her small form rushing towards us to envelop us in a hug that spoke volumes of the love and unity that defined our little family. As I slipped the ring onto Kara's finger, the world around us bursting into vibrant life, I knew this moment would be etched in our hearts forever. It wasn't just a proposal, it was a celebration of our journey, of the trials we had overcome, and the future we were ready to embrace together. The picnic continued now imbued with a sense of celebration and joy. Laughter filled the air, mixing with the rustle of leaves and the distant sounds of the park, creating a symphony of happiness that I knew was just the beginning. In that moment, under the cherry blossom tree with the two most important people in my life, I understood the true meaning of love and family. It was more than just the words we exchanged or the ring that now adorned Kara's finger. It was the promise of a shared future built on the foundation of trust, understanding, and unwavering support. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the park, I felt a profound sense of gratitude for the journey that had led me to this moment. The proposal, a memory to cherish, marked the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with hope, love, and the promise of endless possibilities. Our wedding day arrived with the kind of serene beauty that only a crisp autumn morning can provide. The leaves, dressed in their vibrant hues of red, orange, and yellow,
danced gently in the soft breeze, setting a picturesque backdrop for our intimate ceremony. We had chosen a small garden that held special significance for Kara and me, a place where nature's tranquility echoed the peace we had found in each other. As the sun began its ascent, casting a warm, golden light over the garden, our closest friends and family gathered, their faces alight with joy and anticipation. The air was filled with a sense of warmth and togetherness, a reflection of the love and support that had been our pillars during the times of transition. Sophie, in her role as the flower girl, took her duties to heart, her path lined with petals a symbol of the new beginnings that lay ahead. Her laughter, pure and infectious, set the tone for the day, a celebration of love, unity, and the merging of paths into a shared journey. Kara, radiant in her simplicity, walked towards me with a grace that took my breath away. Her dress, a delicate ensemble that captured her essence, flowed around her like a gentle stream. Our eyes met, and in that moment, the world faded away, leaving only the profound connection that had guided us to this point. The ceremony was a reflection of us, intertwined readings, vows that spoke of mutual respect, support, and the promise to nurture our love through the seasons of life. We exchanged rings, symbols of our endless commitment, under the canopy of nature, our witnesses the sky, the earth, and the loved ones who encircled us. As we were pronounced partners for life, the air erupted in cheers, the joy palpable, enveloping us in a wave of love and celebration. The reception that followed was a tapestry of laughter, music, and dance, each moment a cherished memory in the making. Sophie's speech, a blend of youthful innocence and wisdom beyond her years, touched our hearts, her words a testament to the strength of the family we had built together. Today, she said, we're not just celebrating a wedding. We're celebrating love, the kind that brings people together and makes everything brighter. The day unfolded with a natural ease, each moment a reflection of the journey that had brought us here. There were toasts and tears, stories shared and new memories created, all against the backdrop of the setting sun, its hues painting the sky in celebration. As the evening drew to a close, Kara and I stole a moment to ourselves, standing at the edge of the garden, watching the stars begin their nightly dance. Today has been a dream, Kara whispered, her head resting against my shoulder. It's just the beginning, I replied, my arm wrapped around her. Every day with you is a dream. Our wedding was more than a ceremony, it was a declaration of our journey, a celebration of the past that had shaped us and the future we were eager to embrace. It was a day where love was the guest of honor, enjoy the language spoken. In the quiet of the garden, with the night's chorus serenading us, we stepped into our new life together, our hearts full, our spirits united. The wedding, a day to remember, was just the first page of a new chapter, one we were ready to write together, with love as our guiding light. The weeks following our wedding felt like we were living in a dream, each day a continuation of the joy and love that had enveloped us on that beautiful autumn afternoon. But as the euphoria of the ceremony settled into a comforting rhythm, Kara, Sophie, and I began the genuine work of building our future together. Our little family, strengthened by the vows Kara and I had exchanged, found a new sense of unity and purpose. We navigated the complexities of daily life with a shared vision, our love the anchor that held us steady through the ebb and flow of routines and responsibilities. Sophie, ever the beacon of joy and wonder, embraced the changes with an adaptability that inspired us. Her laughter filled our home, a constant reminder of the innocence and purity that love can bring into life. She was our common ground, the thread that wove our lives together into a tapestry rich with color and warmth. Kara and I, now partners in every sense of the word, found solace in our shared dreams and aspirations. We spoke often of the future, of the hopes we harbored for Sophie, for ourselves, and for the legacy we wished to build. These conversations, sometimes deep into the night, were the bricks with which we built the foundation of our life together. We turned our home into a haven, a place where friends and family were always welcome, where laughter was the soundtrack of our days, and love the undercurrent that colored every interaction. Our door was always open, a testament to the life of inclusivity and warmth we were committed to leading. The challenges we faced, for they were inevitable, became less daunting when faced together. Financial decisions, career changes, and the myriad of other issues that life invariably presents were approached with a teamwork that fortified our bond. 
the strength we found in our unity made each obstacle surmountable, each victory sweeter. As Sophie grew, so too did our roles within our family evolve. We became not just parents and partners, but mentors, friends, and confidants. We navigated the tumultuous waters of adolescence with an open-door policy, ensuring Sophie always knew she had a safe space in us, a haven of understanding and unconditional support. Community involvement became a cornerstone of our life, a reflection of our desire to give back and contribute positively to the world around us. Volunteering, supporting local initiatives, and participating in community events allowed us to extend the love and stability of our family beyond the confines of our home. As the years passed, the dreams we had whispered about in the quiet of the night began to take shape. We traveled, exploring new cultures and experiences together, each adventure a thread in the rich tapestry of our shared life. We celebrated milestones and achievements, each one a testament to the journey we had embarked upon together. Looking back, it's hard to pinpoint when exactly the building of our future transitioned from an act of conscious effort to a natural rhythm of life. It happened gradually, seamlessly, the way a river carves its path through the landscape, leaving behind a trail rich with life and vitality. Our life together, with all its ups and downs, became a living testament to the power of love, resilience, and shared dreams. We built our future on the foundation of respect, understanding, and an unwavering commitment to each other and to Sophie. It was a future not defined by the absence of challenges but by our collective strength to face them, a future where love was not just a feeling but a guiding principle. In the end, building our future was less about the tangible achievements and more about the moments of joy, the bonds of love, and the shared journey that brought us closer with each passing day. It was a future built not on the sands of fleeting desires but on the bedrock of enduring love and mutual respect, a future that, despite its uncertainties, felt as bright and promising as the love that had brought us together.